Hey guys, my name is Shai, and I just recorded a couple of videos reading out the channeled messages I have received from the Syrian High Council, and I realized this might be a good opportunity since I'm right here to <laughs> kind of explain what that's like for me and why I'm suddenly getting so many messages from them. Like suddenly it, this just became a thing. It, <laughs> it actually happened a couple weeks ago, the day that Pluto went retrograde. I remember because I went to the park with my dog, like I always do, but it was really like one of the first nice sunny days. So, you know, I just laid down in the grass and my dog sat on top of me and I felt, um, you know, the energy of a, the, the energy that I feel when I feel certain higher dimensional beings like connect with me, right? This fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy energy just all around me. And that's typically when I have what I call a divine appointment. <laughs> it's just, just a nap, right? But often when I, if I lay down and I feel the energy all humming around me, I know that's an invitation for me to like fall asleep for 10 minutes and I'll have a quick nap. And I'll typically receive some kind of communication or energy transmission or something like that, right? So it was funny. I was like, sure, I'm in the middle of a park, <laughs> a public park, and my dog is off his leash sitting on top of me, but my, like, my dog's really good. I know he won't go anywhere. And I just fell asleep in the middle of the park in the middle of the day with people and stuff. And um, so while I was asleep, I overheard, I overheard a meeting of the Syrian High Council. I could hear them talking and they were talking about me. And... It's interesting because the, the the being that I could hear talking like the most I could tell was like one of the one iteration of my oversoul, right? That's why that one was really resonating with me. And he was talking about me and he was calling me a he, <laughs> which is funny because from their perspective, like they don't care about our bodies, right? They just read our energy. And from to their from their perspective, apparently my energy reads much more masculine. <laughs> so I was laughing about that. But anyway. Um, they kind of told me a bunch of, like, I was hearing them talk about me personally, right? Personal stuff that I don't really feel is relevant to mention here. It was, it was just like personal stuff, just talking about me and like my soul cycle and my lives and stuff. And, um, but I could tell that it was like this, it was like a meeting. It's like, I could practically feel them sitting around a round table, but of course these beings, they... It was very clear to me right from the beginning that when we use the term Syrian High Council, it's like a whole spectrum of, of beings. And they're like, yeah, it's cool. Use the term for like all of us. They don't, they, they're cool with that, right? Um, so Syrian High Council, it's like over in like Sirius, right? There is a literal like physically embodied ETs that you could call the Syrian High Council. And it goes up through the dimensions, right? It, they exist through dimensions. And if you're tuning into one version of them, you are getting echoes of all of them, but you can also kind of tune specifically into one of the iterations of this group consciousness that is multidimensional. And I was tuning into, from what they've been able to describe to me, they're non-physical, they're up, like above, it's like at least 10th density and, and above non-physical, but their energy comes down through the... Um, the serious portal. And so <laughs> I, when I woke up from that nap in the park, I saw all these blue rings, right? Blue, blue light rings. They were more like indigo actually. And I see blue light a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot when any kind of mystical energy thing is happening. Blue, blue light like flickers in my vision. I see big blue eyeballs. It's like a whole thing. It's always blue. And so when I was waking up from the nap, I actually saw these like big blue rings that were like beaming around me. I was like in a vortex of blue rings. And um, by the time I was waking up, it was being pulled back, right? But they had been beaming these like blue rings down on me. And I understood that was part of the energy transmission. It was really funny because my dog was sitting on like my stomach. He's like, you know, tiny little dog. He was sitting on top of me the whole time. And I was like, he was in the middle of the transmission. He was in the middle of the rings. It was really cool. <laughs> um, I'm sure he was helping. Um, so that was my first experience really connecting with them. And I was really, really, really excited about that because I have a dream that I remember from a couple years ago at this point. So in this dream, it was one of those dreams that was not a dream. I actually understand it to be like a glimpse of a potential future for me. Um, I was just sitting on my bedroom floor meditating, uh, but then I felt this like enormous, amazing, fantastic electrical energy like flood my body entirely. You know, it's like take the, you know, when you get like a download and it's like you're all shivery and sparkly and you know, feeling it. This was like that, but like a thousand times more. It was, it was like, it was like I was getting electrocuted, except it didn't hurt, right? It was just fantastic. 
and I opened up my mouth and in the dream I said I am serious except I said it in this like crazy gravelly like I was like I am serious <laughs> it was like really weird <laughs> it was because and when I said that when I said I am serious I could tell that it wasn't me I could tell even though it like it was like this experience of trans channeling them is what it was. It was this experience of trans channeling them because I remember almost getting freaked out in the dream. Cause I, cause I suddenly said, I am, you know, serious. I am someone who is not me. Like I, like I didn't say I am shy. I said, I am serious. And I remember in the dream that kind of freaked me out. Cause I was like, am I going to forget who I am? Am I going to like lose track of my own consciousness? Like, am I going to mess up my identity? Like how can I suddenly be someone else? But that's how, how it was. Like I, that's what came out my mouth. And I knew that they had, like flown, you know, fl flown, <laughs> you know, they had descended into my body and were like talking out my mouth and it was crazy. Right. Um, and that's something that I have honestly kind of like aspired to. I love people who trans channel. I receive so much enormous benefit from channeling that happens on uh, in that kind of depth of consciousness. Right. Um, and I would love to be able to do that. <laughs> that's like something I would love to do. And when I had that dream, of, I had basically had a dream that I was trans channeling some level of Syrian consciousness and I've had that in the back of my head wondering if that was ever going to unfold for me and so when I had this experience at the park of like connecting with them so 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 strongly and I got really excited because I was like maybe if I roll with this maybe this will open up that doorway for me right maybe I can maybe I can do that that would be cool that would be fun right and so that's been a few weeks now and essentially every couple of days it's like suddenly there's just it's it's just comes through so clear um like uh, I, especially when I'm outside in the sunlight like it apparently is really important to get sunlight for for me to channel it's like if I'm walking around in the sunlight it, it just starts coming in or sitting on my balcony it just, it just starts coming in and I it's like um that's why I haven't been doing them in terms of like you know doing readings at my desk with with cards because the messages come through so clear and I don't I don't really need the cards to reflect like typically you know any, anyone who's reading cards is channeling right but the cards are so useful because they give you reflections and it helps you figure out like what data to focus on and like it inspires your direction and it gives you visual clues and all that and it gives you this like awesome grounded reflection right but um and for me that has really been so amazing like if i'm trying to figure something out i go to my cards and i get the message like through the cards right the, the cards like activate it right they're activators is what they really are but it's really interesting with the syrian high council it, it, it's like so the messages just come through so clear uh, <laughs> and I'm kind of curious why, like why, and as I'm saying that <laughs> they're showing me it's, well, it's first of all, because, um, you know, some level of my oversoul is part of the, their collective consciousness. And I have recently been able to calibrate my own frequency to the frequency of that version of my oversoul, like more closely, right? I am a better vibrational match to that aspect of my oversoul than I was, you know, six months ago or whatever. So it's partly that. And it's also that specifically like why this Syrian group, because it's funny, the very first day I had my awakening, like the, the very first day when I first Googled starseed, the first thing I was attracted to was Sirius, like Syrian starseed stuff. That was the very first thing. Um, but it never really connected with me that much. Like I, I have been, you know, really into Hadarian stuff our Arcturian stuff and like different things like flow through and it's always like mixing it up right nothing really ever sticks for that long um but the Syrian consciousness was kind of always on the back burner for me until this last few weeks um but now that I'm finally like at the point where I am clicked into that it's so familiar it is like so familiar it feels like me it feels like home. Um, and I, I actually understand now how my walking around personality and like my walking around human mind, the way I just live and operate in my life normally as a human is actually very, 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 very closely resonant to like the core of Syrian consciousness. And I think I didn't notice that before because of actually how like normal it is, right? You don't always notice things that are completely normal because it's like it just blends into the background right so 
I think so that is some of the reasons why their messages just come through so clearly and I just have to get to the computer and write them down <laughs> as, as fast as or scribble in my book like as fast as I can just to get them down because uh, it just comes out and the message comes through like it doesn't come through in a linear way it, it, it's like I will see you know, if it's like a sort of a longer message that might take me like five minutes to read out in front of the camera, right? It, that'll come through in like five segments. It'll come through in segments and I'll see all the segments all at once. And then I have to like linearize it on the page. and I have to try to write them down all at, all at once. Or, but I have to write, the, I wish I could write them all down all at once, right? I wish I could write it down all at once, but really I have to go, okay, like what's part number one and then write that down. And then what's part number two and then write that down. But it's like, I can see it in a circle, right? It'll be like, this is part of the message. This is part of the message, this, this, and this. And then I have to linearize it in a, you know, a little mini essay type of thing. And distracted by yelling happening out my window. I think, I think that might be it. I just basically wanted to take the opportunity to explain why I'm suddenly going to be posting a lot of content where I'm reading out messages from the Syrian High Council because that's apparently the thing I'm doing for right now. I don't know how long it's going to last because you know me, right? The next month happens and it's like I'm into like a whole different vortex of energy and I never really know how long something's going to go on for or what the next thing's going to be, right? But this is what's happening for right now and that's where I'm at and that's what it's like for me to be doing this. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, super quick. I actually just got up and walked away, but <laughs> I wanted to mention something. So I mentioned that when I was asleep at the park, I overheard like a council meeting, right? And it's like there were voices talking in English. <laughs> and I remember thinking, isn't that interesting that I can hear them talking in English? How does that work, right? And my understanding is that that's my... Because obviously they're not talking in a linear way using words, right? They're communicating with their vibration, their non-physical consciousness, right? Um, so they're obviously not speaking in English, but it's the, you know, the spectrum of my higher selves, right? <laughs> the spectrum of my higher selves that comes down from their level of density all the way down to me does the translating for me, right? Does the translating for me. So it's like all of my higher selves, all of the the whole spiral path of myself that goes all the way from me to them when the energy comes down through the channel of myself <laughs> it is translated for me by myself and that's why i can hear them in english <laughs> and why the messages come through really easily in terms of english verbiage <laughs> so i just i had to throw that out there so this is really the end of the video this time bye